Hello. My name is Mrs. Ingram, and I am here to talk to you guys about our psychology electives. So psychology is, in my opinion, one of the most exciting classes you can take. Really super interesting because it's all about you. Psychology is the study of individual behavior. Um, and we begin this general course with the study of the brain. Look at all our brains here from AP Psych because every thought you have, everything you do, everything begins with the brain. So after we study the brain, really interesting, we do all sorts of topics. We study sleep and dreams. We study development from womb to tomb. We study how we learn. We study abnormal psychology, all of those mental disorders. I know you want to know what schizophrenia really is. And by the way, no, it's not split brain like you think it is. It's not multiple personality disorder. Um, and of course, then we wrap it up with social psychology, which looks at how our, how our individual behavior changes when we're in a group. Um, so in social studies, we have two options. We have college psychology, which you can purchase three college credits through SUNY Farmingdale. Um, for that, you have to sign up for Psych 1 and 2. And our other option is AP psychology. As any other AP class is, uh, we follow the curriculum from the college board. It is a bit more rigorous, a bit more intense. Uh, at the end of the year in May, we do have an AP exam. And then of course, if you get a three or especially a four or five in the AP exam, it can exempt you from taking um, that intro to psych class in any of the colleges or universities that you are applying to. So once again, my name is Nicole Ingram. Uh, if you have any questions about psychology, please don't hesitate to come down and see me. I am in room 201 or feel free to email me at ningram at eischools.org. And yeah, I hope to see you when you get to learn all about you. <laughs> Bye. All right, hey everybody, it's Mr. Falkman. I just wanted to talk to you about next year's Participation in Government course. It is entitled Participation in Government through Civic Engagement. It is a possible choice of um, a course that satisfies the participation in government uh, you know, requirement of the region's board, uh, but also fulfills a new requirement or a new option, I should say, of the seal of civic readiness, which is a special designation on your region's diploma. All right, so civics is basically the rights and responsibilities of the citizen. All right, we all learn this throughout, you know, all of our social studies classes, what we have as a right and what we have as a responsibility um, within a society. Okay, so civic engagement, as you can see, is to make a difference in uh, the civic life of our communities and developing combination of knowledge, skills, values, and motivation to make a difference. All right, so it's through both political as well as non-political processes, and it's a morally um, and civically responsible individual who recognizes the importance of engaging the social fabric and ultimately um, taking action making judgments and uh, taking action where appropriate, all right? So this course is not your, your standard uh, participation government course, all right? In standard courses, in my course, um, I explain to kids what they're um, gonna be focused on, whether it's politics, whether it's public policy issues, what have you. This course is different, it's gonna flip it. And it's going to basically mean that the students are coming up with their own policies and their own uh, well, potential problems as well as their new solutions that they're going to come up with and um, ultimately try to tackle those problems. All right. Now, I know some people might say, can people under 21 really make an impact on society? Well, yeah. All right. Back in uh, 1971, they created a constitutional amendment that gave um, Americans the right to vote at 18, no longer 21, which is what some states had required, whereas the federal government was requiring us to serve in the military. And uh, it took a grassroots effort from the ground up in order to get that 26th amendment passed 27th amendment was um basically a 19 year old's college essay that he didn't get a very good grade on and he wound up researching this proposed amendment from back in the 17 um, 80s and 90s and in fact got the uh, groundswell of support to get the necessary number of states to actually ratify 
um, this amendment that says the Congress can't give themselves a raise while they're in session, which is as as much of uh, you know people participation in government as as you can get. So this is more participation rather than just the government. It's participating within your community um, at, with non-governmental entities contacting our local uh, governments, uh, state, federal, even national governments, in order to make a change that the students feel uh, needs to happen within their world, all right? So uh, recently, uh, the Tufts University did um, uh, some research and they found that as many, nearly three times as many people, 18 to 24, said in late 2020 that they donated to a political campaign or registered others to vote compared to 2018. So that's, you know, young people getting involved in um, their community as well as, as their country and making it a better place. All right, presidential election turnout among young people ages 18 to 29 reached 52 to 55 percent, significantly higher than the 45 to 48 percent in 2016. So young people are getting uh, politically active, all right? Now, this new thing that the Regents has is the Seal of Civic Readiness, and it's a special designation on your Regents Diploma. And this course would help satisfy some of the requirements that you need in order to get that um, special certification. All right, so um, meeting with government officials, participating in civil discourse, which is you know having conversations with each other about uh, various issues, uh, about controversial issues that you decide, and creating a project about a historic or cultural issue important to them. All right, in this, you're going to learn uh, civic, civic skills, civic mindsets, and civic experiences in order to see what our rights and responsibilities are, what can we do about it, how can we potentially change uh, people's um, opinions about the topic in order to engage them, and obviously engaging means, you know, doing something about it, all right? So in the project that you will work on, and this will be, you know, the cornerstone of the course itself, it's the civic readiness capstone project in which you identify a civic issue, a problem facing them, their school, or their community. All right. You, or I should say your school, or your community, and you're going to analyze the civic issue problem and you're going to evaluate solutions. What are the different, uh, you know, potential alternative solutions and you will design or execute that solution for the problem. You will take informed action to address the issue and through a project based approach, you will you know, focus on skills, knowledge, and dispositions ready for that um, 21st century democratic practice. All right, so it's a hands-on project-based um, uh, course in which you guys tell me what you're going to be working on because we all have, you know, uh, various interests and ideas, whether it's, you know, the environment, whether it's guns. The fact is young people are getting involved in, in politics and uh, civic life every single day. Um, just turn on you know, your, uh, your social media, people are becoming more aware of uh, things going on around them and more able to do things about it. All right. So you're going to learn about the democratic structures and processes by engaging with them. Okay. Talking to your local leaders, talking to your, um, your county legislator, talking to your state officials, even maybe talking to your, your federal officials responsible for, for the, um, the issues that you come up with in order to try to find a better solution. Okay. So um, you will come up with an issue that you care about, develop a focused strategic plan to address the issue, and take real action, and then reflect on the success, challenge, and plans moving forward for the future. All right, so project-based learning, lots of projects. You come up with your ideas. You see your um, ideas through by analyzing those um, issues and ultimately coming up with solutions and, and weighing the impact of, of your solution and uh, whether or not you're able to um, potentially solve some of the world's problems. I mean, what's better than that, really? All right. So it could be a local issue, uh, could be you know focusing on the root cause of that issue. It could be organizing petitions. All right. Um, canvassing, asking people questions about uh, things that, you know, they might also uh, feel about the topic. All right. Um, some of these issues could, you know, are, and again, it's, this is just some examples, gang violence, public transit, teen jobs, all right? Obviously, um, you know, the issue of the environment, the issues that we look at every single day in a government class, but you tackling the issues and uh, doing something about it, all right? So researching, analyzing the, the issue, coming up with an action plan, talking to local politicians, uh, people who could potentially help you in your quest to find a solution, 
And then in the classroom, you're going to reflect on those uh, ways to be active, engaged citizens in the world's greatest democracy. Okay. As far as the civic readiness um, initiative, like I said, it all culminates hopefully with um, the civic uh, seal, uh, that uh, civic readiness seal that will in fact be on your region's diploma. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to tackle some of the world's problems. All right, both locally, um, as well as in the state, and maybe even nationally, and maybe globally. All right, you guys have a good one. Hope to see you in my class next year. My name is Mr. Williams, and I'd like to take this opportunity to tell you about my college credit option elective course, Modern Issues. Pretty much in a nutshell, Modern Issues is a course for students who love history and want to continue talking about current social, economic, and political issues. Modern Issues is a college level course with the option for three credits through Stony Brook University. Signing up for that option is not required, but it is a great opportunity to gain college credits before you graduate. This course is designed to help students become well-informed citizens in an age where they are being bombarded by an unprecedented flood of information. Through the analysis and discussion of relevant modern issues and analysis of news from multiple sources, students will gain the knowledge and critical thinking skills needed to understand and participate in meaningful discussions. What is great about this course is the topics remain relevant and in the moment. The news is our textbook and we get to read, research, and discuss what is happening all around the world. This course focuses on a broad spectrum of topics, including current conflicts, environmental issues, human rights abuses, advances in medicine and technology, the role of groups like the WHO and the United Nations, as well as issues that are currently being discussed inside and outside the U.S. Some of the topics of focus from the fall semester include the 2020 election where we took a look at the candidates and their policies, various environmental issues and how they're being addressed, the future of work and how technology is changing the jobs of the future. We also took the time to research and present on recent conflicts in various countries such as North Korea, Iran, Ukraine, and Syria. And a big part of this course is just completing weekly current events and sharing these stories as a class. A large focus of this course is not just the knowledge gained about modern issues, but also the news literacy skills needed to interpret these topics on your own. But there are challenges absorbing all this information that is available to us today. To help with this daunting task, Stony Brook's news literacy program, in collaboration with schools worldwide, have developed useful tools like VIA to help gain clarity. To help you get a better understanding of the course, here's a student feedback section. Media class has helped me be more aware of worldwide issues and has helped me develop a strategy in which I can verify all information online. Like we got to look at a variety of countries and their conflicts and we got to go in depth into them. And personally, I like that a lot because I just found it interesting to see what countries had what conflicts. Um, Modern Issues is an important course to take because it really can show you how news can affect you positively and negatively. And also Modern Issues focuses um, you to be attentive and really like look at the current events that are going on in the world today. So yeah, you should definitely take this course because why not? I thought learning about the reality of what goes on in the world and how it impacts our own country was interesting. Modern Issues is important to take because it opens your eyes to what is going on around us even what we do not fully notice. The activities we do, such as the blackout, makes you study the news deeply and analyze what is going on around us. For people who really never watch the news like myself, it made me realize that a lot of stuff goes on that we do not always realize. What's going on guys? Um, I'm a student in Mr. Williams Modern Issues class and I figured I'd inform you guys a little bit about the class if you're looking to take it. Um, it's a really good class, I really enjoy it, you know. We learn a lot about what's going on in the world right now, current events. And I really like that because it's really interesting to see what other people in your class like think about what's going on and if you guys agree or disagree. Well, now that you've heard what the course is all about, thank you very much for listening. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me at swilliam at eischools.org.